All right, welcome back here to the Xfinity Sports Report, your Colorado High School connection. Seeing all the semifinal highlights on the program. Time to break it down with our own Marty Cesario. Marty, that's a long day of football mm -hmm. yesterday. You were on the call for each of the two 5A broadcasts, but uh, good to get you back in. We'll pick your brain a little bit. Let's start with the games that you or I didn't see, but they were going on at the 3A level, and it's Palmer Ridge making the championship game against Erie. Let's start with those Erie Tigers. I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast today. They had lost two games late October, mm -hmm. yet were able to battle back, and they're on their way to the state championship game after the victory against Longmont. Yeah, and if you know uh, that program and you've been around them, you know, watching them advance this far, I think it's very fun as a football fan and, 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 you know, as an advocate of Colorado State football. That, that's just a fun atmosphere environment over there with the Erie Tigers, and they have legit parts, right? I mean, Chad Cooper's a good coach with some pedigree, you know, being under Gary Davis at the Broomfield program. And then Noah Roper, I try to tell the story of what Noah Roper is as I travel around the state through the course of this postseason. That guy is legit and on the next level at the 3A level and beyond. And to see them advance does not surprise me at all. Yeah, he has over 2,500 yards rushing on the season. Of course, that's what Erie does. We saw 15 play drive for a score mm -hmm. in the game against Longmont, an 18 play drive for a score against Longmont. 34 touchdowns on the season for Noah Roper. And so Erie's going back to a championship for the first time since 2008. They do have one state championship in the sport of football. Came back in 1997. They get Palmer Ridge, and you talk about one of the top quarterbacks in the state. You talk about Ty Evans. Marty, he has thrown 40 touchdowns compared to eight interceptions. And It'll be interesting to see Palmer Ridge undefeated. The only undefeated mm -hmm. team obviously left in 3A. Yeah, he can sling the ball when you speak of Evans. And boy, they got a fun coaching staff. Uh, another, uh, a fresh piece to add to what we're going to witness on Championship Saturday with, at the 3A level. Seeing the Bears from a very, uh, very engaged sports community down there in Monument. That is going to be an excellent show at Class 3A. Yeah, Tom Pulford's done a great job with the program. He took over in 2012. They only won two games that year. It came up back-to-back -back eight win season each of the last two years, and they're finally breaking through to play in their first ever state championship game. All right, let's move to Class 4A, and let's start with the Pine Creek Eagles. They've been a model of consistency. As I mentioned earlier in the program, Marty, mm -hmm. they are the gold standard when it comes to 4A football. That's very fair, and it's valid. The resume says it. I mean, they're going to their fifth championship game. They've won three. Coach Miller in his 13 years has always had the right parts and are resourceful in how they put them together. This year, David Moore III still doing his thing at the tailback position. You've got the big boy Christian Lewis. I love Xavier Hill on the defense. They're doing what Pine Creek has done, and that's why they've advanced. Nine of the last 10 years, Marty, they have won 10 or more games. I mean, think about that. Nine yeah. of the last 10 years, they're making their fifth championship game appearance in the last seven years. And you talk about David Moore III. I mean, here's a kid that already has 3,300 rushing yards in his career. Went for two bills here this past week. I mean, he is a kid who has been terrific, and he, he's only a sophomore. Build up the story. I mean, <laughs> I wanted to tweet out, so DM3 is two for two because he is just a, a sophomore here, and he's got a couple of years to go. You know, he's earning it, and... Uh, I mean, let's not jump ahead in advance, but two consecutive championship games, and we know what he did in his debut last As year at Bronco State. <laughs> exactly. As a freshman, he was terrific in the championship game win against Broomfield last season. So Pine Creek's back, been there, done that. We know about the <laughs> Eagles, but their opponent, Pueblo South, making their first ever championship game appearance. Congratulations to Ryan Goddard and the crew down there in the Steel City. They got the win against Broomfield. Mm -hmm. And now they're following through on what we saw. Remember, we went down there for that that regular season conference title game against Ponderosa. And, and you know, we always respect Pueblo South and what they have and then what we witnessed. Like, okay, all right, you, you got the stuff. Uh, you know, all those skills players just, uh, you know, at their disposal. Casalino just distributing to guys like Marcel Barbie and Thomas Panunzio. And then you got Steven Brock the back, you know, and then I saw Lyman up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And I'm like, okay, you guys got the parts and they just proved it. And it's nice to them. Congratulations to the Colts advancing to the title game. Yeah, I know you and I both had an opportunity to speak with Ryan Goddard, their head coach, this summer. Knew they were going to have pieces, didn't know how it would all come together. You mm -hmm. mentioned the Casalino kid at quarterback. 44 touchdowns to yeah. six interceptions on the year. 21 of those touchdown passes going to Marcel Barbie. And again, the Colts going to the state championship game. This is a Colts team that lost in the first round of the playoffs last year. 
to Pine Creek. It was a 42-10 game, which mm -hmm. Pine Creek really beat up Pueblo South. Uh, can Pueblo South go into Mile High Stadium and knock off Pine Creek? Yes. Yeah, I think they can. Uh, you know, all respect to Pine Creek. You know, we've talked about them for years and years and what they are, and they certainly get to play the role of we've been here, we've done this so many times. But Pueblo South has all the parts. They certainly can jump on Pine Creek and put 14 points on the board before anybody has settled into their seats. And again, I always start looking around, do you have the bigger kids? And they have some of those kids that can last all four quarters. So the answer is yes, Brian. Yeah, and again, we, we're getting new blood in Class 3A mm -hmm. with, of course, Palmer Ridge. Right. Getting new blood in 4A with Pueblo South. We go to Class 5A. We have new blood in 5A as Eagle Crest is on to the championship game. Marty, you called that contest on Saturday afternoon. It's the Eagle Crest team. They go for two in the second overtime. They go for the win. They get it, and they're moving on to their second ever championship game. And that's a fun part of the story, right? While everybody was talking about here we are, Centennial League, Jeffco League, in the end, no, there's this Eagle Crest program that has never been in this position in two and a half decades. This is all fresh to them. They're trying to prove and follow up on an undefeated season. They've been 23-1 and one since last year at the start of the season. Quarterfinal loss last year. Can you move on? Well, they got to the semifinals and then they got here and boy, they did it in exciting fashion. Jumped on a program like Columbine with a large lead early on, 17 to nothing. Then the Rebels come back because they are the Rebels. And, and then boy, those overtime sessions were very fun and, and you were waiting for it. We've all seen those games, right? Who's going for two when you don't have to yet? And the answer was the Raptors did and just a jump pass between Mergerson and Theron Sandoval Jimenez and just what a great moment for the Raptor family to be able to follow through, get a double OT finish to move on to a championship game. Yeah, and again, that's a Eagle Crest program. They won a state championship back in 1993. The school was only mm -hmm. two years old back then, and they've had very little success, especially in the postseason right. since then. But here they are this year. Mike Schmidt, what a job he has done. The great senior class. Victor Garns getting hurt earlier in that contest, but uh, able to come back. We'll see how healthy he is uh, for the championship game. Who will they play? Pomona coming up in the championship game. It's the most explosive offense in the state. Yeah, and they showed it in the semifinal. You know, one point I'm looking at my unofficial stats. They had four two-play drives <laughs> that all finished with touchdowns. I mean, you know, they had the 73-yarder to David Ross, then then uh, Colton Mueller with the 98-yard touchdown reception, then Max Borgie exploded doing what Max Borgie does. And, and let's add this, Max Borgie, who looked beyond a level that anybody can execute on the football field. Not only had the three touchdowns, but he had two explosive plays for scores that were called back. He was that good and on that level. Amazing. All right, so it's going to be one final time ever to watch Max Borgie coming up on Saturday, 2.30, right next door to our studios here. Eagle Crest Pomona for the 5A state title. And Max Borgie, I mean, in my mind, I've been covering the high school scene a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a native. I've been following high school sports uh, for the better part of nearly three decades. I mean, he's going to go down in my mind as one of the best all-time players in the state. I think that's fair to say. And he has that look, walking down a field level, always wink with each other, exchange highs. Because we've you know known each other for so many years, he's been a starter for four years. Oh. You know, just watching him down there in the ways he was obviously prepared and ready to go, and then how he executed. Like, this kid is is on a level beyond everybody else, and he's certainly showing us something that we don't see very often at the high school level in the state of Colorado. I'm with you. I mean, this kid, he is, when people talk about the McCaffrey thing, reference that, I'm like, yeah, he's in yeah. that conversation. I agree. Yeah, but he, he just has those same type of moves, that yeah. fluidity, the smoothness that Christian had uh, back in the day. All right, Marty, you're going to be on the call. Yep. And uh, the championship games, 4A and 5A, have a great call. This will be a lot of fun. Yes, I think, it I think will. we're going to get two very good games. Yeah, very exciting. Okay, that's uh, Marty Cesario. We'll take another timeout. We'll be back to wrap it up right here on the Xfinity Sports Report.